Hi, I'm Rad Linux, and today we're gonna get down and dirty with sub gigahertz. <coughs> so I made a video a couple months ago featuring very simple sub gigahertz capture and emulation. Uh, the video was really about trying to spot sub gigahertz devices because I think that for new users uh, to this space, new people to this hacking space, sub gigahertz is kind of complex to understand in terms of just what is using sub gigahertz and, and why it's using sub gigahertz. Now I featured remote control uh, because that's like one of the really, really common uses of sub gigahertz. That's not the only use. Uh, I think that the weather app it uses sub gigahertz to work with sub gigahertz related like weather stations. So you can just kind of transfer information using this as well, uh, relay information wirelessly, but remotes are really the most common. The last remote I featured was super simple, one button, one action. If you push the button twice within a certain amount of time, then it also created a secondary action, which was two beeps instead of one. But today I'm going to show off a little bit of a, of a different type of device, something with a slightly more complex remote. Hi. <laughs> so here we go. We got this really beautiful piece here, uh, a three action vibe, uh, vibe, sucker, vibe. Cool. Now this remote looks pretty straightforward and simple, right? Only a few buttons, but with just a few buttons, we can do a lot of different actions and that's going to make it a little more annoying to try and capture and understand, figure out what's going on, when it's going on, why it's going on. So let's dive right into it. Now on my flipper, I'm going to go and we're, we're going to, we're going to take a little peek over here. We're going to, go to our sub gigahertz and we're going to go to read raw. Now, when I like to read raw, I like to <laughs> go to the RSSI threshold uh, and just kind of bring that just up down a little bit uh, so that I'm not capturing just everything in the air. And we're going to start off by simply turning on the device. So, <laughs> there we go. You can see this blue ring is on and we are ready to do it raw. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play with this power button uh, because uh, it doesn't really do anything. That's kind of weird. Oh, I don't understand why it's not doing anything. So let's try holding it down. <laughs> okay, let's try that again. So we can see that this power button has a distinct feature and that is that you have to hold it for it to work. So let's try doing a little bit of recording uh, and then let's try that again. All right, now we're gonna try this. We're gonna hold that down again. All right, so these are actually two different signals. You can see that they're very slightly different uh, in terms of just like visually, you can see one is, is higher, one is lower. So uh, these are two different signals and you will need to catch each one separately. Uh, this is not the same button, the same signal to create the same action. Uh, that's, that's one of the things I think it's kind of weird about sub gigahertz is that you know, sometimes buttons can have multiple functions. And I noticed this actually first on fans uh, because I was trying to turn a light on and off with a fan remote and uh, I kept trying to capture and I was realizing that the, the capture I was have doing was for uh, on, not off. And that when I tried to go and turn it back off, it wasn't turning off. So let's try another one. Um, we're gonna, we're gonna, stop that capture we're going to just erase that right there we're going to try capturing again now i'm going to hold down let's say one of these individual options all right well oh i guess actually so i don't I have to hold it down i just have to push it, push it once but now i'm going to push it again okay you can see we can change modes now All right, three pushes, three different modes, and three different signals. Uh, 
Yep. And if I hold it down, it sends an even different signal to turn off. So one touch turns on. Holding it down turns it off. Again, these are all separate signals. So you'll have to capture them individually if you want to have access to all of the features of this device. So let's stop. We're going to clear again. Uh, and let's try this. So let's say that I want to use this suction tool because the sucker is very popular, uh, very popular. And if you don't know already, you should probably get one of these for the person who in your life that might uh, benefit from this. Uh, generally people with a very specific set of parts. So we're gonna try and go, we're gonna change the, oh, what's that, max power. All right, well, maybe that's too strong. So we're gonna go down. All right, I'm at max volume, max right now. We're gonna go down. And there's only a couple settings, frankly. That is one of the downfalls of this particular device. Uh, so we're gonna go, you know, and so now each button press up and down all has its own signal. So these two buttons have a total of uh, like three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so each one of these has three signals attached to, to the button press. Uh, and I guess it kind of remembers or registers based on, I, honestly, I, I can't even tell you. Uh, if it starts off in the middle, I don't know how it would recognize or how it recognizes where we're already at. Uh, but the, they are distinctly different signals for each one. You can see one, two, three. Yeah, so there, there, or actually, I guess there's only two signals for each one uh, because it can only go up to the max and then down. But you can see that there, there's still uh, distinct, uh, distinct patterns that are, are very different for each one. Now let's turn that off because that is quite the ex the exciting action maybe a little too exciting for us we're gonna clear that out uh and yeah you know i mean really there's not much more to that uh you know like i've said in the past you can tell that this is a sub gigahertz device and i was i could tell when my uh partner grabbed one of these that it was a sub gigahertz device because if you look at it there's no infrared remote uh, this is this solely for this particular uh device this particular model of device and uh, this is not going to, to work with anything else. So this is, to me, kind of clearly sub gigahertz. I think if you open up the back, uh, we can actually see that there is an FCC ID in there as well. Uh, so you can look that up online. You can get information on all of the the various, uh, you know, signals. Uh, well, really, I guess we can find out what frequency it's at and what what it's using. Uh, so there's always fun information to be found online. Uh, yeah, there you go. I, I didn't bother with the uh, the initial capture because I feel like, it, it, you know, if you want to know how to use the frequency analyzer, you know, you can go back to my other video, take a peek at that, uh, you know, enjoy enjoy the the excitement of, of frequency analyzing. I mean, it's really honestly not that exciting. But the, there is a fun little new feature on the flipper, and that is the region. So it'll tell you what region you're in. Uh, so if you're ever confused and you're like, well, why isn't this working? What, why isn't this range working? You can go check what region your flipper is set up for, and you can uh, better understand what frequencies are going to be available for you uh, through the official firmware. Uh, and as I always say, the official firmware is really the safest bet. You, you probably don't need the novelty of unlocking uh, sub gigahertz frequencies, uh, partly because if you expand outside of the range ex uh, expected for the device, then you know there can be some some damage. But also, you know, sending out signals to devices that are not going to be intended to work in your range will probably only have an adverse effect, uh, not the kind of effect that this would have. So thanks for hanging out. I'm Rad Linux and I'll see you next time.